Okay, so the hypothesis follows the if, action or condition. The conclusion follows the then, and that's your result. Okay, so in that example that I gave at the beginning, the action is buying the product, and they're claiming that the result is, if you do that, then you're going to be happy. Um, <clears throat> we talk about these statements have four names. Okay, these statements have four names. The original one is called the conditional. Okay, the original statement is the conditional. If P, then Q. Okay, P and Q are just standing for whatever, whatever we're talking about. That's the original. That's what we call the conditional. Then we have the converse. The converse switches the hypothesis and the conclusion. The converse says, if Q, then P. Now, a lot of times the converse is not true. Sometimes it is, but uh, not always. For example, uh, in what we, the, the general example we, we discussed, uh, if you buy a product, then you will be happy. Well, if we reverse that, it says, if you are happy, then you will buy our product. That doesn't really make sense. Um, we can say it, but it doesn't necessarily make sense or not necessarily true. Okay. The inverse uh, is uh, it negates. Okay. It uh, puts the negative spin on the conditional. The inverse says, if not P, then not Q. So for this statement, it would be, if you don't buy our product, then you won't be happy. Again, not necessarily true. Just because I don't buy your product doesn't mean that I'm not going to be happy otherwise. And then the last one's kind of a fun word, I think. The contrapositive, okay, it puts the converse and the inverse together. It switches the order. And it negates both statements. If not Q, then not P. So for this one, that would be uh, if you're not happy, then you didn't buy our product. Again, not necessarily true. So I do have that note down on the bottom. The converse, inverse, and contrapositive are not always true. In some cases they are, in some cases they're not. It depends on the situation. And the key to determining whether they're true is you've got to look for the exception. You've got to look for the case where it's where it's not true. If you can say for one situation that it's not true, then um, you cannot say that the statement is always true. Which kind of makes sense, but that will come into play. Uh, we're going to rewrite the statement in if-then form. Okay, then we're going to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive, and then we're going to determine the truth of each statement. So, uh, the first statement that we have is that all elephants are mammals. All elephants are mammals. So, our first, our original, the conditional, the if-then statement here would be um, if an animal... Sometimes you have to add an extra word in there. Okay, in this case, we've got to introduce the idea of an animal. Okay, if an animal is an elephant, then it is a mammal. Hopefully, we know enough about biology that we know that that is a true statement. Elephants are mammals. So if your animal is an elephant, then it is a mammal. Okay, now the converse switches the order. Okay, the converse switches the order. So the converse here would say if an animal is a mammal, then it is an elephant. Okay. 
if an animal is a mammal, then it is an elephant. Is that a true statement? No. See if you had shaking. It is not a true statement. Okay, think of think of a different mammal. Okay, uh, a squirrel. I don't know why a squirrel popped in my head, but squirrels are funny, right? Um, a squirrel's not an elephant. Okay, but it is a mammal, but it's not an elephant. Okay, so the converse here is now it could be true. Okay, your your animal could be an elephant. So you know that would be true, but otherwise that's not necessarily a true statement. Okay, now the inverse takes the original, takes the conditional, and just sticks the word not in there. Okay, so if an animal is not an elephant, then it is not a mammal. True or false? Wait a minute. True or false? False. Okay. Use the same logic that we just used. Use the example of a squirrel. Okay. A squirrel is not an elephant, but it's still a mammal. Okay. It's still a mammal. So uh, that one is false. And then finally, the contrapositive um, combines the converse and the inverse. Okay, it changes the order and it negates it. Okay, so the contrapositive here would say if an animal is not a mammal, then it is not an elephant. True or false? True. Okay? If you're not a mammal, then there's no way that you can be an elephant. Most of the time, okay, now I'm saying this with a condition here, most of the time your contrapositive is usually true. Is usually true. Uh, it was not in the very first example that we didn't really write down that I just talked through, but that was because it was more of a, um, it was kind of an opinion kind of thing. You know, if you buy a product, then you'll be happy. Well, that's very subjective. Okay, let's look at a couple more, let's look at one general example, and then let's actually look at a mathematical statement, okay? Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. I want you to take this statement, if an animal is a fish, then it can swim. I want you to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive and determine whether those statements are true or false. And then we'll look at the mathematical example together. If angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Okay? If angles are right angles, then they are congruent. So we could be talking about two angles, three angles. They didn't really specify, but we're just going to keep it general if we have some angles that we're observing. Um, if they're right angles, then they're congruent to each other. So that is a true statement. All right angles are congruent. Okay, that is a true statement because they all have 90 degree measure, so they're congruent. The converse, flip the order. Okay, if angles are congruent, then they are right angles. Is that true? If angles are congruent, that's what we're saying is the, the true part here, then are they necessarily right angles? Uh-uh. Okay. We, I mean, we can have 60 degree angles, we could have 37 degree angles, uh, we could have vertical angles, 
Okay, vertical angles are congruent. Um, so that is not a true statement necessarily. Could be true, but not necessarily. Okay, the inverse negates, okay, if angles are not right angles. then they are not congruent. Most of the time, I've tried to use this um, with all the other logic that we've been using, most of the time you can use the same examples for the converse and the inverse to determine the truth of the statement. Okay, so um, I just specifically said vertical angles. Okay, vertical angles are not necessarily right angles. They could be right angles, but most of the time they're not right angles. There's some other measure of an angle, okay? But they're still congruent to each other, even though they're not right angles. So that one is also false. And then our final statement, the contrapositive, if angles are not congruent... then they are not right angles. If angles are not congruent, then they are not right angles. That would be a true statement because right angles must be congruent to each other. So if they're not congruent, then there's no way that they can be right angles. Okay. All right. Last example here. Yep. Okay. Right. Last example. Um, now, this one is not given to us in the conditional sense. Okay. This is just given to us as a statement. Okay. This is a postulate uh, in mathematics. Um, the idea that collinear points lie on the same line. Okay, that is the definition of collinear. Co meaning same or they share. Linear meaning line. Okay, so we have collinear points. They are on the same line. So to write this in if-then statement or in if-then form, okay, um, then we would write if points are collinear, then they lie on the same line. So just tweaking the wording just a little bit to put in conditional form, if then form. If points are collinear, then they lie on the same line. So convert, uh, and that is true. Okay, obviously that was based on the original statement, the postulate. Okay. I don't use that word a lot, but it is good to be familiar with it. Okay, postulate. It's one of those good math words. Okay, converse, switch the order. If points lie on the same line, then they are collinear. True? Yeah, it's the definition of collinear. If you have points on the same line, then that's the definition of being collinear. Okay, so here's finally an example where the converse is true. Okay, we haven't had one of those yet. Uh, the inverse. Okay, the inverse. If points are not collinear, then they do not 